If you're on a neutropenic diet from cancer treatments, you have to follow some pretty strict rules when it comes to food. Here at Bayou Bakery in Arlington, Virginia, Chef David Wass has a turkey meatball recipe that fits the dietary bill, tastes great, and is easy to make at home. Down the bayou, right? Down the bayou, bayou bakery, chef, owner, extraordinaire, David, David Guas, and of course, Dr. Lauren Morrow, oncologist, hematologist at George Washington Medical Faculty Associates. We're talking people on a neutropenic diet. Why are they on a neutropenic diet? Right, so neutropenia is when patients' white blood cell counts fall. White blood cell counts or white blood cells are used to fight infection. So we see this often with patients that are going through chemotherapy. Um, the chemotherapy in a process of trying to kill the tumor cells, a side effect is that it also hurts the bone marrow. And the bone marrow is what produces your white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. When the white blood cells drop, patients are at increased risk for infection, so they need to keep um, notice of that when they're doing their food preparation and when they're eating out in order to reduce their risk of getting infected. Turkey meatballs. That's right. Uh, something we do at the restaurant. Um, we, uh, we do black and turkey meatballs, but of course, you know, there's a lot of variations on this. So we're going to make sure that we, we highlight those variations and, and then allow people to sort of uh, play around with little things. You don't like it spicy, then cut out the, the heat. So there's a lot of different uh, ways to adjust this. But this is the way we do it here at the restaurant. It's a very popular item. All right, so we've got some raw turkey meat, ground turkey. It's a nice lean meat. Uh, it's, Fat is like 7% uh, next to the, uh, to the 93 on the protein itself. So a neat way to sort of work with your uh, raw protein is to actually get a bowl and put some ice underneath it and then another bowl on top of it. It can be metal, it can be glass, it doesn't really matter. It really helps to, to keep that chill on it as you're prepping because it does take time and we forget how much time it does take to prep certain items and we forget about the meat. This is actually a wonderful way to make sure that you keep the meat at a good temperature because the thing that we're worried about is leaving food out on the table. It can get infected that way. Bacteria can, um, can get into the food and can um, uh, reproduce. So this is actually a wonderful way of preparing your meat in, a, in an even safer fashion. So we're just going to devein the, uh, the, the bell peppers here. Deveining is just a process of taking out that sort of white center piece here, which can really sort of leave like a bitter flavor. So you want to make sure that you remove that. And of course, all the seeds will sort of pop out of a bell pepper pretty, uh, pretty easily. So we'll give it a quick little rough chop. We already have some sort of prepared here. Nice little dice. We're throwing everything in the blender. So we've got some diced onions as well, some sweet onions. So we make a quick little puree, if you will. Uh, we're just going to blend this up. I threw a, one clove of garlic in there as well. Let's we'll say make that quick little milkshake, if you will, that little slurry. And you just want to blend it to where that you know that garlic's sort of broken up. And you can see it's got a nice little slush to it. We're going to add that mixture to the meat directly. We're going to add a little bit of cheese. Now, this is a grated uh, Reggiano, uh, Parmesan Reggiano. So uh, a couple different things that happen with this. Obviously, there's more moisture we're adding. Um, so there's going to be a little bit of, uh, uh, of that as we increase uh, the moisture level. But it's also a, sort of a nice sort of sharp uh, saltiness to it, um, so which we can cut back on the salt itself. Uh, I like to find salt in things in products and ingredients so it's got a sort of sharpness to it and brings a little bit of that sort of saltiness to it from the aged parmesan. Mm -hmm. Now you can use other move, things. I'm move this over yeah. here. All right. so we can, and you can use other different uh, other types of cheese. If you opt not to put cheese in it, that's fine. If you want to make this a dairy-free uh, meatball, that, that's fine as well. It's got a lot of moisture in from the vegetables so you know you're, you're sort of uh, protected in that sense. A little bit of black pepper, freshly ground. <clears throat> We've got some uh, dried oregano. And we do have a little fresh basil as well that we're going to put in here. It's just a little bit of salt, not very much at all. Let me, let me ask the doctor, okay, so why is this all good if you're careful being cautious about your immune system? So the, the main thing, again, is to make sure that things are well cooked because the bacteria sort of thrive on things that are left out for a while or um, can be found on uh, fruits and vegetables just when they're raw. So I think a lot of patients that are neutropenic, um, they're concerned about eating fruits and vegetables, um, which are, of course, you know, healthy and good for you. Um, but you can eat as many fruits and vegetables as you want as long as they're um, cooked. And if you're going to eat them raw, you just want to make sure that you wash them really well with cold, uh, clean tap water at home, dry them off in a, a dry paper towel. All right, so we're going to add uh, one egg as well, just a whole egg. We use just a large grade A egg. 
and that's going to be our binder, sort of the act that, that, that bind and pull all the ingredients together. We've got some breadcrumbs, so we're just going to mix this a little bit. And one thing I just want to mention when you're um, eating eggs, when you're uh, on a neutropenic diet is, again, cooked eggs are fine, that's no problem. You just want to be aware of um, uh, raw eggs or not very well cooked. So for instance, you probably shouldn't order your eggs sunny side up or over easy. Make sure they're scrambled or in an omelet. But you want them eating meat. You I don't definitely want them losing do. weight, you want to lie. Exactly. So we want to, uh, this is sort of the one time where your doctor actually probably doesn't want you to lose very much weight is when you're undergoing chemotherapy. It's important for you to stay strong to be able to um, fight, through, fight through the disease. And so we want to make sure that you have um, your meat to maintain your protein. Um, again, eggs are another good source of um, protein and fat. And um, again, it's just important to make sure you maintain your nutrition while you're going through treatment. We're going to just add a little bit of fresh basil. Doctor, if you can hand me that fresh basil. Of course. Uh, we're going to slide it's this like over to the left. Doctor. <laughs> basil. Yeah, well, fresh basil is a nice sort of, it's going to bring that sort of sort of fennel and anise flavor and uh, just really sort of helps brighten things up a little bit. So we're going to just do that a little chiffonade. And it doesn't need much. When you're dealing with fresh herbs, they, they believe it or not, are very potent. So we're just going to sprinkle some fresh, beautiful basil. You can smell it. It's got that anise uh, sort of smell and flavor. So we're going to, so you can see right here, we're going to go directly into my hand here, my washed hand. And you can see just enough to sort of hold a shape. As everybody knows, you have to be, when you're preparing raw meat, even normally, you want to make sure that your um, hands are clean, that you wash all of your utensils and your um, workspace afterwards, but that's even more important when patients are neutropenic. And, and we also often suggest you know, having two separate cutting boards, so maybe you have a cutting board for your meat and then you have a separate cutting board for your fruits and vegetables. Into the oven? That's it. We're ready to go. Uh, doctor, if you can grab those, I'm going to go ahead and open the oven for you. So the nice thing about these is it doesn't take very long. Correct. Just straight ahead would be perfect. Beautiful. So they, they've cooked now for how long? Uh, we've got them in there uh, at 350 degrees for about uh, 20 to 25 minutes. We've got a batch ready to go. We've actually already basted it in our, our house-made uh, marinara, a sort of tomato, oven roasted tomato sauce. So and that's the nice thing is, you know, the tomato sort of just really sort of helps to insulate them. They look incredible. You ready to dive in? Let's dive yeah, in. Let's go. Doctor, after you. Right. Note, Maybe. The, note the tenderness when uh, your fork uh, goes down there. Look how moist they look. Yeah. yeah. Just little added steps, you know. Very simple. Oh, those are really good. They're delicious. Those are fantastic. Perfect if you're on a neutropenic diet. They're great if, on any on diet. On any diet. They're delicious. You can make them at home or you can get them here at Bayou Bakery. <laughs>